today it's going to be about Meghan Markle's niece, Ashley Hale. Yeah, that's Samantha Markle's daughter. They're estranged. Also, it's going to be uh, Princess Eugenie and is she moving to California to be a neighbor to Meghan. So we'll see. I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like the video. Where am I? There I am. Please do like the video. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. Hey, I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. So, Meghan Markle's niece, apparently, she and this niece are very, very close, almost like uh, girlfriends. And um, and she um, gives her advice, they visit, uh, they have a very warm, apparently, you know, good relationship. And, um, and, and, and the niece is not particularly close, I think, to her mother, uh, Samantha Markle. So, I thought we'd do a reading on that relationship between uh, Meghan and the niece and see how that's going. And then also... Um, I heard something to say Princess Eugenie and her husband uh, may be considering moving to California. Neighbors to Megan. Megan's been sending them property. I don't know. This is more gossip magazine stuff. But I thought I'll just do a, a, a drawing on that and see if there's anything there. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to use this Impressionist Tarot. Uh, today and I love these cards. They're uh, cards that, and if you stay at the end of the video, I'll tell you all about the cards in detail. But um, they um, are put together from actual art, and uh, and then the um, author of the cards has added, in many cases, a few things to make them more um, um, obviously uh, for tarot interpretation. But um, very interesting cards, lovely cards. You probably recognize a lot of the images that you'll see here if you're an art aficionado, or even if you're not, probably. And um, but um, so we're going to talk about Meghan Markle's niece, Ashley Hale. So Meghan Markle's niece, Ashley Hale. That's how we're going to slant this today. But before we do anything, let's have just a moment of meditation. So, yeah, what a twist that is. And it's, what's interesting is that uh, Meghan Markle doesn't exploit the uh, relationship. You, you don't ever hear her talk about her niece. And you don't hear the niece uh, making headlines about uh, Meghan Markle. Who do you hear in the headlines? You hear Samantha trying to get money from Meghan or saying things that the tabloids will pay her for, obviously. And uh, so, that's sad. Um... So, Meghan Markle's niece, Ashley Hale. What can the cards tell us about that? Meghan Markle's niece, Ashley Hale. And before we do too much, let's do just a short three cards um, on whether that's a, a true and uh, relationship for Meghan and Ashley. You know, a nice relationship. One, two. Three, Megan and Ashley Hale. What can the cards tell us in three cards about that relationship? So the first card we have is 10, 11, 12, 13. Well, 13 is the death card, actually. So the death is not death. Uh, death is the end of a cycle. So it doesn't mean anything on its own, but that's what we get here. And this is a pretty... It's not as horrible a death card as you see in some of the other uh, decks, but it is a little dark. And uh, but uh, the fact is, the 13 card major arcana end of a cycle death card, uh, Ashley Hale and Meghan Markle. The next card up is the seven of clubs. Ah, oh, I lost my pointer. So, the seven of clubs right there. And so, these trees represent the seven clubs one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can see here. 
And what that typically means is you've got one club that's kind of fending off all the other issues. And in this deck, it's got this one beautiful tree that's right here in the foreground and uh, creates uh, starts to create that obstacle that you'll have to walk around before you can uh, pass these other uh, wands, which of course are plans or actions. So interesting. So the first two cards we get is the end of a cycle and then fending off uh, other actions. Huh, still doesn't seem very clear. So Meghan Markle and Ashley Hale, what is this? And then the final card is the 14 uh, of uh, the Major Arcana. So these are, how many Major Arcanas do we have here? We have two Major Arcanas. And we have the 13 and the 14. And the 14 is uh, Temperance, okay? Finding a perfect balance. Wow, so this card is starting to look a little bit uh, like uh, Ashley Hale. So let's read it. <coughs> all together and see if it makes some sense uh, this relationship with Megan and Ashley well this says end of a cycle so could it mean <coughs> excuse me so could it mean that this is um, this relationship is is coming to uh, the end of something so it could be the end of the way it existed before the beginning of something else altogether or it could in fact be just that, that relationship is coming to an end for we don't know why unless we look at the second card which talks about a lot of issues. The Seven of Wands is typically one wand, which is helping you fend off kind of the other uh, issues. So is Ashley that one wand that helps Megan to fend off the other issues caused by her, her Ashley's mother, Megan's sister, Samantha? Half-sister, I should say. And is that kind of a is that kind of a lot to put on one girl's shoulders, especially with her, uh, uh, you know, against her mother? If that's even happening, I don't get the feeling that that's what's happened, but this kind of starts to make sense in a sentence. End of a cycle, defending against a lot of issues, and then the final card here, which reminds me of Ashley a little bit, is uh, finding a balance. So it could mean that it's the end of the relationship as it has been, because there have been so many issues that she's helped to kind of block or, or navigate, navigate around, as you can see here, you have to go navigate around these other issues. And uh, because what she's doing, she's finding some sort of a new balance. Well, that sort of makes sense. The old relationship is finished. Something new has started, and the reason being the navigation around the issues that are involved in their difficult family, and that uh, Ashley is finding some sort of a new balance. That makes sense. So now let's just do a, um, we won't do a full Celtic cross unless we need to, but what we will do is a dyadic cross, which is six cards. I don't know if I'm the only reader that's using the dyadic cross, the six card spread. Uh, I haven't seen it. And I do watch other readers, by the way. I know some readers will tell you, oh, I never look at other people. I don't want to see what they're saying. Heck, I'm, before I started doing this, I was the person that was, you know, flipping through YouTube, looking at stuff to keep me occupied. And I, and I have still several readers that I watch. I <clears throat> started with Psychic Violetta, whom I love. Uh, I then uh, found uh, Marianne, a Revealing Light Tarot from uh, Australia. So, uh, Violetta is uh, Canada. Then uh, a Polish, Violetta is a Polish lady who uh, lives in Canada. She's a, a sweetheart. Then uh, Marianne in uh, Australia, Revealing Light Tarot. Then I uh, found um, Lena Rodriguez, Tarot Down Under, also Australia. And uh, who, as a matter of fact, has been on Mary Trump's show uh, recently. And she does a lot of collaborations with other readers, which I haven't had the courage to, to approach any readers to see if they'd be interested in having me collaborate with them. I don't know. And then uh, the other one that I watch a lot is um, Ellie Dreams Down Other, Under. Ellie Dreams Down Under. She's Australia also. And she started out interpreting her dreams. And now she's a full-time tower reader, sold her business to do that. And they're all great. I love them. They're all positive. And uh, that's what I like about her. Except Lena, she's got a little bit of an edge to her, uh, but that's what I like about her too. But her overall message is certainly positive. But let's uh, get these cars acclimated because now we're talking about all these tarot readers. Let's talk about Ashley Hale, Megan's sister. Uh, Megan's niece. Ashley Hale, Megan's niece. Ashley Hale, Megan's niece. You really should wipe and look at these, this deck at the end of the video. They're so interesting. One of the things I'll mention right now is what's cool about the back is, like I told you, they're, they're art. And on the back, it looks like uh, the back of, an, of a painting with a little hook that you'd hang it. Uh, they're just very cool. So what can the cards tell us about Ashley Hale, uh, Megan's niece? 
and that relationship in six cards. Two, three, four, five, six. Ashley Hale, Megan's niece, that relationship in six cards. Signifier card. Okay, so here we have the six of cups. Oh, this is sweet because, okay, cups are emotion and compassion. And you know, I tend to have very simple interpretations for the card. I really rely on the art. Uh, that's why I have so many decks, as you can see behind me here, uh, because I rely on the art of the cards that happen to, that I happen to choose usually at random without much thought uh, for, for every uh, reading that we do. But anyway, so the six of uh, cups is remembering the way things were in a better time. And we just said in that first little draw that it was the end of a cycle and perhaps the beginning of some new cycle. And so this is a little reminiscent. This is a little, yeah, sweet. Uh, remembering how things were maybe before things got so complicated. The um, challenge to that, Ashley and Megan's relationship, is this queen of uh, coins, this queen of value. I don't know. I get the feeling this might be Samantha, actually, trying to get some value. This queen is a little um, challenging. It looks like she looks like she's she's challenging someone with her hands on her hips, and uh, she's wearing that crown and she's looking uh, with kind of a plain face out into the the crowd. I suppose it is. Uh, so the challenge to remembering how things were for Megan and uh, Ashley is this queen of uh, pentacles, this queen of value. I think that's Samantha. The basis of this whole thing then is this knight. Or is this a knight or a page? This would be a page. This is a page of value. So the uh, basis of this whole thing, the page is the uh, least uh, uh, strong of the royal cards. And in person, a page, a knight, a queen, and a king is how they'd kind of be at court. And the page would be just the fellow who brings a message to the court and says, you know, here's the value. Here's the thing uh, that I'm bringing to this court for consideration. So the basis of all this has to do with that very little amount of value. So what value is it? Is the little amount of value that Samantha has? Is it the uh, bit of a relationship that uh, Ashley and Megan have uh, together? Whatever it is, it's, it's a beginning of, a message of, or just a little bit of value that's the basis of all of this. So it could be that Ashley isn't, you know, so terribly important in Megan's life. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I've got relatives that I love, but they're not in my life much. And so if anything happened to them, if I could help them, you know, you always want to be there, but they have very little meaning in your day-to-day -day life. I kind of see that as where this is. In the past of this reading, we have here the king of uh, value. In the past, the king of value. Oh my. You know what? This is Megan's dad. This is Megan's dad. I think he was important to her in her life. I feel like all the success she had in the industry where he made his living, you know, he was a cinematographer uh, for television, if I'm not mistaken, and won several awards and even won, as a matter of fact, California Lottery for something over around $700 uh, million, dollars, I think. Million? 700000 Maybe that's more like it. But um, yeah, 700000 I think is what he won. Uh, at random. But anyway, so this, in the past here is this king of value with a wand to hold on to, a plan to hold on to. I feel like this is the dad. So that would be the grandpa of Ashley. Ashley's grandpa. Okay, this is turning to a family reading. In the sky of this reading then is this five of swords. Ah, now it's making sense. The swords of truth, justice, rules, and law. And the five of swords is moving out of troubled water. And that's what's in the sky here. So maybe that relationship that they have is changing to something that's uh, more defensible or safer uh, for everybody involved. And then the final outcome in this uh, dyadic cross for Megan and Ashley is this nine of cups. And oh, this is beautiful. Because, okay, cups are emotion, compassion, heartfelt situations. We have uh, nine cups here set on a beautiful placid lake. And, um, and uh, the nine of cups uh, represents almost familial, generational, emotional uh, emotions, or value, the value of those emotions, I would say. So um, that's the final outcome, is that there will be established some sort of a generational caring or emotion or maybe even relationship uh, that's different from what it was when they started. So we'll read it again just for clarity. So Ashley and Megan, 
Well, it's signified by this Six of Cups, which is remembering the way things were probably before they got so complicated. The challenge to it is Samantha is the Queen of Pentacles, really standing there challenging to get her bite of the pie, I guess. The basis of this with this page of uh, pentacles and wow it's all about money isn't it this page of pentacles and emotion wow it's all about money and emotion uh this page of pentacles is just the very little um value that this relationship has basically in probably either of their lives you know it's a dear relative but they're not in your day-to-day decision making i'm going to guess is what that means so that's the basis of this so finding a place that their relationship can rest uh, given the value that it has and that's not a derogatory uh, mention that I have about this value and then in the past of this is this king of Pentacles which I think is the dad is and in Ashley's case the grandfather but that's uh, going to the past in the sky or uh, the aim of this is to move things truth justice rules and law swords move things out of troubled water and then the final outcome hopefully will be this uh, nine of cups which is almost familial um, uh, good uh, feelings so I love that uh, so it seems like they've ended one relationship that they've had it's starting on something that's a bit different and uh, and appropriately assigned to each of their lives according to the value represented in this page of Pentacles that's what I see for that so that's Ashley and Megan so whatever you're reading in the uh, gossip rags uh, remember uh, who those two people are and um, and what their situation is and do a little Google search on either of them and find out something that's a bit more factual than what you're gonna see on the newsstands now Princess Eugenie and I know I'm pronouncing the name with a terrible American accent so please forgive me and if you can write phonetically in the comments how I should be pronouncing it that'd be helpful but uh, Princess Eugenie her family uh, she's, I guess she's pregnant now again with the second child. And are they considering moving to California? Princess Eugenie. And um, let's do three cards first to see are Eugenie and Megan friends? Three cards. One, two, three. Okay. Let's see what we get here. Should be interesting. Are they friends? Okay, so what we have here is the Two of Swords, ah, making a decision. So if they're friends, it's because they chose to be friends. Or if they're not friends, it's because they chose not to be friends. One or the other, or they're maybe both together. Because the Two of Swords, Swords of Truth, Justice, Rules of Law, Truth, Justice, Rules, Law. Okay, Two of Swords is making a choice, making a decision, deciding which way you're going to uh, shoot that uh, ball on this billiard table. Uh, the next card for whether uh, they're friends ah, is this uh, Ace of Swords. So this is a great big offer of truth, justice, rules, and law. Okay, right in the middle of that question. Are they friends? And then the final thing here is this King of Cups. And this is a great big offer of emotional support. Are they friends? Yeah, I think it was a decision that they had to consciously make, given that that's the royal family. You've got to be on one side or the other, it looks like. Or maybe Eugenie and her sister are just the, the at the level of uh, royals, that they're at the point, since they both carry on their own careers and kind of live their own little bit separate lives, that they're at, at, a, at a place in that family where they can make that choice. And, um, and so that's what happened here. There was a choice that was made. It was based on truth, okay? And, uh, and I think Eugenie even introduced Megan to Harry. And then the final uh, card for that is this great big king of emotional value. So, yeah, I think they're, they've, they've made a choice to, to be friends. <clears throat> and apparently, Harry and those two, his cousins, they were all close. They're all similar in age. So they were all close as kids anyway. So now um, let's do uh, six cards on Eugenie to see if... She's seriously considering uh, having a home in the States. Uh, obviously, someone uh, she earns a good living. Her husband is rich. They're of the royals. But I don't. I understand that at her level, she probably doesn't get that much, mm, perhaps, uh, monetary uh, help from the crown. I could be wrong. You can let me know in the, in the comments. But um, are they considering... A home in California. Six cards. Okay. I'm going to take this one. One, two, three, four, 
five, six. Are they considering a home in California? Six cards. What can the cards tell us? Signifier. Well, there's her husband. This is the Knight of Pentacles. This is her husband. I forget his name. I think it's Brookbanks, but I'm, don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I believe it is. And um, so this reminds me of him. He is the fighter for value in their family. Could be actually, he's the monetary engine in their family. Uh, and, or in addition to the engine of uh, fighting for the uh, value that that family has in the world. But I wouldn't say in the royal family, but in the world. He gives them an identity separate from the royals. This is her husband. Okay, I think it's Jack Brookbanks, but I'm not sure. The uh, challenge to that is this nine of the major arcana. The nine of the major arcana is the uh, hermit. The hermit, uh, and this is a strong card because it's a major arcana. And the challenge to Jack uh, Brookbanks being the knight of their value is uh, this card that finds a shining a light to find their way in the world. He's got a, a, a walking stick of uh, wands, which is uh, uh, your plans, your actions, and your forward movement. So the challenge to him uh, establishing their value is being that careful, cautious uh, element, or having that careful, cautious element of being very s careful where you go uh, before you move forward, but you'll notice in this card, there's a clear, paved, uh, well taken care of path for him to follow. I love that. The basis of this, uh, as to whether they're considering a move to California, is this two of the uh, major arcana. And so this is the priestess, okay? Um, so this has to do with uh, honesty. This has to do with uh, answers to questions. This has to do with um, serene or uh, divine guidance almost. And so the basis of this whole thing is that they've had some very good um, uh, guidance, uh, either from within themselves or from without, from someone else or others, or in combination. But they've got good guidance along that path. The past of this ah, is the strength card. Another major arcana, five, six, seven, eight of the major arcana. And this is the, 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 the feminine energy taming that wild beast. Yeah, that is Eugenie in a nutshell. The uh, sky of this reading for, are you moving to California? That's what I wanna know. Are you gonna buy a home there? Well, okay, so in the sky of this is the fact that they are the magicians. They have all the tools of the tarot at their disposal. They have the swords, the pentacles, the cups, and the wands, the truth, the, the value, the emotion, and the action uh, to do so. So they have all the tools that they need, and uh, that's the aim of their life, and, and, and that's so they can do whatever they want. Are they going to move to California, or at least purchase a home here? And this is the five, and this is the hierophant. The Hierophant is the government. The government, I believe, for the two, and I, don't they have a home in Portugal as well? I'm not sure. Aren't they mainly based out of another country other than uh, uh, the United Kingdom? Uh, it's, this is coming to me in my head. I don't even know why I would say that. But um, I must have read something. But uh, the, the likely outcome of this is the Hierophant, the government. I think this represents the monarchy. I'm going to do f uh, four more cards so we get some more clarity. So the likely outcome is that the monarchy um, may have some influence on that, but I can't see where they'd have much because their lives are totally separate. Or not totally, but largely separate from the monarchy. Um, the very self of that question, are they going to move to California or have a property in California? Is this nine... Okay, this is justice. This is nine of the major arcana. This is justice, weighing the scales. Truth, justice, rules, and law on her lap. Uh, eyes kind of closed because justice is blind. If they do so, it won't be a decision that's related to anything else other than the uh, whether it's valid, a valid thing for them to do. Uh, have another home that they can retreat to. In the, um, the environment that that's in then is what? Is the eight of wands. So many issues. The eight of wands are, wands are actions, plans, forward movement. And the eight of wands, there's always a lot of issues happening at the same time. It just so happens that the issues in their life are pretty stable. They're all uh, represented by the masts of boats, 
on a, a liquid emotional um, inlet, okay, um, or marina, I guess you could say. So the uh, the sit the environment that this uh, justice is in, the even-tempered way of making a decision, is that it's all really uh, anchored in an emotional but stable uh, environment. The hopes and the fears for this, look at that, I love when the cards repeat, is that it's a decision, okay? When the cards repeat like this within a drawing, uh, for me it means that whoever, is, however this information is coming to me, is that I know how I'm going to interpret this card, I'm going to interpret it, interpret it as a decision being made, which I always interpret it that way. But the Two of Swords, Swords, Truth, Justice, Rules, and Law, the Two of Swords making a decision based on one or all of those things, truth, or justice, or rules, or law. So, there's that. And what's the final outcome for whether they'll have a home in California? Come on, tell me yes or no. Well, it's, it's not a strong uh, yes. So this is the page of swords, truth, justice, rules, law. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's the beginning of an idea. This is the messenger coming to and say, well, you know, maybe you'd consider this. So it's an idea. It's an inkling. It's a possibility. But I don't think it's set in stone. So uh, that's what we've got here. Um, he is, the husband is the uh, fighter for the value in that family, guided by the uh, tranquility and wisdom of the hermit, uh, anchored uh, by the uh, wisdom and the gentle uh, caring of the uh, priestess. Uh, in the past is a strength that uh, this female member of the royal family has shown in taming that beast. And the sky is the magician of having all the tools they need to make something happen. The final outcome has to do somewhat uh, as is a strong showing of the government, which for me is uh, the hierophant, which for me is the monarchy, not necessarily the government, but the structure by which a thing is, is ruled. The uh, very self of that question is justice. Uh, it's uh, in the environment of uh, kind of an emotional, uh, calm uh, situation where lots of issues have to be considered. Uh, the hopes and the fears are that it's a decision that would have to be come to uh, in the purview of truth, justice, rules, and law because it's swords. And the likely outcome is that it's an idea. It's a thought. It's a message. It's something that could happen, but it's nothing uh, written in stone yet. So that's what I've got for that. Well, just like you'll always hear me say, that's the end of the video. So uh, that was pretty interesting uh, to find out about the niece. And uh, hopefully that was insightful regarding uh, Eugenie. And um, let me know what you want me to read about. And I'll read about that. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So this Impressionist Tarot, these cards are everything that I've ever wanted in a set of cards except for the quality. And I'll tell you what I mean. The um, box is fantastic. It's a beautiful box. If you gave this as a gift or if you got it as a gift, you'd feel like, wow, somebody really put some thought into what they were uh, giving me. And the guidebook is very useful. It's a full color guidebook with very thoughtful uh, ideas as to the divination of the cards. And uh, the, uh, the creators of this are Corrine Kenner and the artwork by Arturo Pica. And so what they've done is they've actually taken Impressionist's um, that you will know of and uh, and that you will see art in galleries and um, and use their art to make these cards and, um, and so what they've, they've taken the actual artwork um, and sometimes uh, Arturo Pica has added elements to the original art to help in the divination or he may have blended a couple of uh, pieces of art uh, from one or two or uh, artists to uh, get to this um, this work here but they're gorgeous to use I love them and uh, I feel like this is just a good way to get the cards mixed up without creating too much damage to them I mean some folks like to kind of really handle the cards and bend them and break them you know, to uh, make them theirs that's just not what I like to do uh, nothing wrong with that if that's what you like to do but uh, this impression is tarot I'm so happy with these cards well coming back tomorrow I'll be doing it all again so ciao for now You really make a big difference. Thank you.